I'm going to walk through and prove some of these anti-differentiation rules. So here's rule number one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's just take a look at this guy over here, and let's just say that um, we've got some larger, some function, h, as a function of x, and that is equal to the integral of f of x plus g of x dx. This means that the derivative of h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x, like that. Well, now let's take a look at this side over here. This right here, let's say we have some function large f of x, and that's equal to the integral of f of x dx. And then we've got another function, um, we'll call it large g of x, and that is equal to the antiderivative of g of x dx. So when we differentiate f prime of x, we get f of x. And when we differentiate g prime of x, we get g of x. And so what, what we have here is that f prime of x plus g prime of x is equal to f of x plus g of x, just like that. And so what we've, what we've got here is that h prime of x on the left side is equal to g, well, I'll do it as this, is equal to f prime of x plus g prime of x. So we've got this guy is equal to this guy, which means that this guy, which is this, must be equal to this guy, which is this right here. So we've got both sides are equal to one another. Basically, what this says is, look, if we've got the integration, if, we're, if we want to find the antiderivative anti of two separate functions, we can split those guys up and find the antiderivative of each of them separately. So let's keep going. The next one is the constant multiple rule. So this says that if we integrate a times f of x dx, that's equal to a times the integral of f of x dx. So let's call this over here, let's call this, um, oh, it doesn't matter what I call this, let's call this guy over here h again. So h of x is the function whose antiderivative is equal to this guy on the inside. So the derivative, h prime of x, is equal to a f of x. That's the definition. Now let's look over here. Let's call this inside guy right here, let's call this guy on a large f. So what we have is a times large f of x. That's the same thing as a times the integral of f of x dx like that. And now if we differentiate this with respect to x, this is clearly a times f prime of x. And we know f, f if this guy right, if this guy um, right in here, if this guy is f of x, then f prime of x is equal to f of x right here. So this is equal to a times f of x. So again, both sides are equivalent. So what this tells us is that we have, if we have a constant a inside, we can pull it out. Now let's take a look at the third one. Well, actually, I'm going to skip the third one because we proved this in last, the last video. Okay, and then, so this would be in video, let me see here, I'm trying to remember what it was, um, 287, I believe. Video, 287. Okay, now, the last one's the polynomial, which says if we integrate c sub n times x to the n plus all the way down, 
to c sub 1 x plus c sub 0 dx. We can split this guy up. We want to just show that that's equal to c sub n x to the n over n plus, oops, sorry, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus all the way down to c x squared c sub 1 x squared over 2 plus c sub 0 x okay that and then plus some constant of integration so if if we use up here clearly we can we can write these guys out separately using number 2 so excuse me using number 1 we can break them all up so if we break each of these up we get the following on the left side we get the integral of cn x to the n dx plus the antiderivative of I'm just gonna go dot 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 because we don't need all this all the way down to here okay um, c0 dx like that. So this guy right here, we know based on number 3, this is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And based on 2, where we get to pull this cn as a constant, we get to pull that guy out, we get this. Plus, I'm just going to call this um, c star constant of integration plus. Okay, now this guy right here, Actually, let's call this guy C, um, what do I want to call it? Let's call it C N star, okay? Um, it's really not that big of a deal, but I just, C N star, dot, 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 all the way down. This guy right here, pull the C1 out, because it's a constant, I get X squared over 2 times C sub 1 plus C sub 1 star. That's the constant of integration. Plus, this guy just becomes c sub naught x over 1. We don't need that. Okay, plus c sub naught star plus some, we'll say, c star, which is the last constant of integration for the whole, for the whole big, oh, excuse me, this. Okay, so we just have this. But now if I take... And I combine all these constants of integration, just call them C. So this guy, this guy, plus all the other ones in the middle, plus this guy. Then what I get is C n x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus all the way down to x2 over 2, C1 plus C1, um, excuse me, C0 x plus some constant of integration, which is what I have over on this side. So all of these formulas work, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do example number six using all these formulas. So what I want to do is I want to integrate the following. I want to find the antiderivative of one over x squared plus three x plus two minus eight over the square root of x dx. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. Let's do it in a different color here the integral of. So I'm going to split this guy up. This is 1 over x squared dx plus 3 times the integral of x dx plus 2 times the integral dx. Okay, we'll figure out that guy in a second. Minus 8 times the integral of x to the negative 1 half dx like that. And I'm going to pull this guy up too, up top here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract one from the power. So this is going to be x to the negative 3 over negative 3 plus, let's call this constant 1. This is going to be 3x squared over 2 plus a constant. This guy is going to be 2x plus another constant. This is going to be 8. Now if I go backward, this is just going to be... Um, what is this going to be? I think it's going to be 2 square roots of x. So let's just check that last one here, because that one, well, plus a constant of integration here. So this last one, um, 
We'll do my multiplication. Let's just check that. We'd have x to the negative 1 half plus 1 over 1 plus negative 1 half, which would give me x to the 1 half over a half, which is 2x to the 1 half. Okay, so that's, that works out real, real nice. So this right here is negative 1 over 3x to the third plus the constant. I'm going to get to that guy in a minute. So take this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and let's just call those when we add them all together. So for example, let's just take C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4, and let's just call that C. It's still just a constant. It doesn't really matter what we, what we, you know, if we put all four of these, or if we just put this guy, it's just a number. So this is plus 3 halves x squared plus 2x minus 16 square roots of x plus some constant. Oops, yeah, minus 16 square roots of x plus a constant of integration. So let's just check. Oops, when I did this, I did this wrong right here. Let's change that first one. That's the problem with doing things too fast in your head. So I want to add one, it'll be x to the negative 1 over negative 1. So this will be negative um, 1 over x, like that. And then we've got the plus 3 halves, x squared plus 2x minus. So that looks like it, it works out just fine. 